Hey there, gang. All right, let's talk about episode two of the Pedal Vlog. What are we going to talk about this time? Well, we're going to get more into the weeds on particular specific overdrives that I mentioned last time, finding your overdrive to match with your reverb and then filling everything else in between. We'll get more into the weeds later and do specific episodes on different flavors and stuff and what I've found over the years about those flavors and how they work with other effects, different styles, modulations, delays, what have you. Before we go there, let's talk about two things. Because we got our overdrive, right? We got our reverb. That's what we established last time. So, what do we want to do next? Well, before we get anything else in between, I want to talk about compressors, whether or not you need one, and fuzzes. Why? Because compressors and fuzzes are highly interactive together, as are compressors and overdrives. Now, what type of compressor? Is it an optical compressor? Is it um, an 1176 style? Is it a, uh, um, a VCA? A lot of these will have an effect on your effects. And my feeling is I generally, personally, doesn't have to be what you feel or find out yourself, but personally, I generally tend to lean towards optical because they're less obtrusive. There's a little bit more bloom to them, especially when they're working with other effects. I use a compressor because I play a lot of slide guitar. If you want, like as Josh Smith talks about, he wants, you know, as much headroom and as much dynamic as possible so he doesn't use a compressor. Is a compressor necessary? Absolutely not. And I have found not using a compressor very, very fulfilling. But if, if you choose to, if you want to even out the highs and lows and bring the sound of your rig more together and balanced, totally, totally acceptable goal, Many, many people want that. Or if you want more sustain, then a compressor is in your future. So all of these compressors have very different flavors, even amongst optical compressors. Like for instance, I love the Smoothie. Uh, the Ovnifex Smoothie is an amazing optical compressor. The, Sm the Thorpe Fat General, amazing. That's the one I'm using right now. I mean, it just breathes, and yet it does what you want a compressor to do without being overbearing. I, For acoustics, I tend to like a VCA-based compressor because of the way it interacts with the spikes, the dynamics of an acoustic guitar, which can be very sharp, right? Okay, so, but that's for you. We'll go into the weeds more with that later. That's for you to figure out. And we'll try to figure that out together. I won't leave you alone out there. I won't leave you hanging. But the main thing is, do I need a compressor? And where does it go? Okay. If you want more sustain, if you want your sound more balanced, if you want the highs and the lows brought in together, if you want sustain and the highs and lows brought in together, or if you want to control some spikes, or if you play some very dynamic music, then yes, a compressor is necessary. Another way a compressor can be very cool is I have found that you can use less overdrive and less fuzz, but start with the overdrive, if you use a compressor. Why? Because the compressor is compressing the overdrive. It's another form of distortion, if you will, or dynamic brought into the signal chain. So, do you put it before or after? Okay, if you put a compressor before your overdrives or before your fuzzes, it's gonna make the overdrive and fuzzer, fuzzer, fuzzers, fuzzes fuzzier. 
right? It's going to accentuate, it's going to heighten the overdrive and fuzz if you put it before the fuzz. It's like driving the drive or driving the fuzz. It's a very cool sound and it's a very legitimate sound. Don't let anybody kid you. I personally like to put my compressors after my fuzz overdrive compressor. Always, almost always, almost always. Unless I'm using modelers and then I tend to put compressors first because they need it. Well, we can get into that later, but they need it. So why do I do that? Well, because I don't want to smash the front end of my fuzz and overdrive more than I have to. I just want to balance it all out and even out the spikes and the peaks, especially when I'm playing slide guitar. And I find I get a more natural overdrive and fuzz sound and tone if I put the compressor afterwards. You can experiment and see what you like. I've liked it both ways, but generally speaking, I prefer my compressor after fuzz and overdrive. It's just more natural, it's more open, it's less hyped, um, it's less accentuated, and you can use, when you use a compressor, a little bit less fuzz and a little bit less drive because the compressor is doing some of the work for you. Right, so that's what you need to consider when you're considering whether or not you need a compressor, if you're using a compressor with a fuzz or overdrive before or after, experiment around with that a little bit because again, we figured out last episode we have our overdrive and we went for our reverb and now we're starting to fill in the pieces in between. So before we get to those other pieces, I think it was important to address compression and how it interacts with fuzz and overdrive. Now, fuzz, you should always, almost always, almost always, if there isn't always, if there isn't, you know, you have to thing, I don't know. But for me, it's always first. And it goes fuzz, overdrive, the overdrive can boost the fuzz, a boost can be after the fuzz to boost the fuzz, and then into a compressor, which gives it a little more grit and a little more, right? And then everything else. Now, you, again, may prefer the compressor first, but then it would be compressor, fuzz, overdrive, boost. You dig? And then once you've figured out what style of compressor, and we can get more into the weeds and compressors too, because they all have different flavors and they all respond differently to fuzzes and overdrives. So if you're mainly using it for more sustain and to heighten your fuzz and overdrive and even out your sound, that may be different depending on your guitar, your amplifier, and the sound you're going for, right? Again, for me, like I said, I like optical compressors because they're the least oppressive and uh, the least intrusive if you get a good one. I've tried an optical compressor that just came out and was greatly hyped recently by a big brand, and I liked it. It was cool, and it had a lot of options, but it was really messing with my sound like no matter what I did you know it had all these options and features and it just didn't work that's why we're doing this blog that's why we're doing this vlog because I'm trying to help you learn from my mistakes and you don't have to spend the money you dig cool so again we can go further on this, but I don't want to bore you too much. Let's keep it in short segments so it's digestible and that you can ask questions to me below. I'll be happy to answer them and address them in future episodes. And then once we get our chain together, once we're like from, you know, pedal one to pedal 10 or whatever, we'll really start getting into the weeds of each style and what I've learned about each particular type. And we'll address some modulation and delay and other stuff shortly. All right? All right. Hope you dig it. Talk to you soon.